All right, we're here on with Eric Ward. Uh, it's September 19th, 2012. It's about 10.45 p.m. Eric's just wrapped up the last of the airbrush work for uh, Project Six Shooter. Um, all info on the truck is available at projectsixshooter.com or on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Project Six Shooter with the number six. Um, we're going to take about the next five minutes to go over the truck in pretty good detail with Eric and discuss the uh, intense airbrush work that's gone on to this truck and um, show how we took this from just being a extreme six wheel vehicle to a rolling piece of art. Eric, go ahead. Okay, we're over here tonight at Indy Body Works, getting ready to do the final coat to clear on this thing. Uh, thanks to the guys at BASF Paint for supplying the paint. This paint job should look pretty awesome when we're done. Uh, when it's act after it's clear coated, the orange that you see on this thing has a lot of pearl in it. The grays that are on this truck have a lot of pearls in it. Uh, right now we're sitting at about 420 hours on just the main truck alone with about 15 to 20 more hours worth of work to do on the bicycle and the front fender for this. Um, imagine working 40 hour shifts in one week, a 40 hour shift in one week and then multiply that times 10 weeks. Now squeeze all that into four weeks and that's, what, that's how many hours we actually put on this thing. Uh, a lot of long hours, but uh, the end result I think is going to be well worth it. Uh, the response on the internet has been great. So uh, we're pretty excited about seeing this thing cleared. That's awesome. Now, where can people go on the web to find out more information about you? Well, you can actually get. Uh, uh, my, I'm actually. Uh, I have a website called IndieAirbrush.com. Uh, we're actually a local airbrush sh uh, shop right here in town, over at Speedway. Uh, a Speedway, Indiana, right? Speedway, home, Indiana. home of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Exactly, just down the street from the racetrack. So Perfect. It's easy to find. Nice. Okay, why don't you take a few minutes and tell us about the truck here. We're going to start on what is the passenger side of the truck. Or no, excuse me, the driver's side of the truck. Exactly. Sorry. It's, it's been a long week for all of us involved. Uh, as you can see over the top here, you can see a little bit of stuff on the inside of the truck, uh, which made it, the interior, there are no doors, of course, so it made it a little bit rough on actually airbrushing the, the, the scenes inside the truck, but uh, we left nothing untouched. Uh, now the attention to detail on the feathers is phenomenal. Is there any special technique that you use there on the feathers? Just a lot of patience. Now on uh, on something like that, I use what I call a uh, dagger stroke, which is a, it's a, a dot with a faded line coming out out of one end of that dot. Um, and there's there's a lot of dots on there. There's a lot of, of uh, dagger strokes on those feathers, but it's just a lot of patience, a little bit of practice, and then uh, you can see the end result. That's awesome. It looks good. The scorpion on the uh, center console here that's going to have the kicker speaker surrounding it. That is, the detail is just phenomenal. For you guys that have not seen this truck in person yet or will see this truck in person at the Vegas SEMA show, you have got a very, very big treat coming to you. Awesome. Okay, go ahead and start talking to us about the outside of the truck. Okay, as you can see, we actually went with a western theme all the way around this truck inside and out. Uh, on this particular side of the truck, we have just the, the, the ghost town type scene with a lot of the sponsors worked into the buildings, into the into the sides of the buildings and things like that. Now, also on this truck, you're going to see a lot of hidden things that you can't see in the video or in pictures. You have to see it in person to appreciate it. Um, but uh, uh, again, you can see the sponsors that are worked into some of the buildings. This is phenomenal, Eric. Thanks. Again, a lot of the colors that we act, the colors that we actually use are uh, black, white, and a charcoal gray, uh, which makes it a little bit difficult. You're not using a lot of different colors, so it's kind of uh, a little bit of patience to actually make all make those three colors talk. That's awesome. I love how all the theme on here is skulls everywhere. That's really neat. But because I've been doing it for so many years, I, I kind of know how these colors are going to react with the clear. So I did certain things on here that, uh, that actually the clear would help bring those things out. And you'll notice there's a lot of uh, different type, types of shadows in here, uh, soft spots and then uh, bright spots. That's going to play against each other once it's clear coated. It's going to give more like a 3D look. Again, that's thanks to the colors that we actually use that were actually, that were actually chosen for this truck. That's awesome. 
And the actual vehicle owner, John Farr, that's a uh, skeleton of his face, right? You took that from a photograph? Exactly. No, that was a little bit tricky trying to make him look like a skeleton, but I think we kind of pulled it off. Yeah. It looks awesome. That's so cool. The six-shooter across the hood is super, super exciting. Some good love to Gage Media Group there. This is this is really nice, Eric. It turned out really good. <clears throat> now, some stuff that you guys probably won't see in the video that I'm seeing here in person is the attention to detail, like how this belt actually looks like true, real leather. Now, did you use any special techniques to get that look going? Yes, actually, we used uh, an actual sponge here. We put down the base coat, which was a darker color. Then I actually took the airbrush and just kind of uh, puddled it up on the sponge itself and tapped the sponge on. And then we, after that dried, then we mixed another thinner version of the gray on top of that. Oh, that's awesome. Now, of course, we had the, the whole uh, holster messed off so we wouldn't get the uh, overspray on anything else. So it's not all airbrush work, it's a little bit of uh, using sponges and little techniques and things like that. All the techniques that it takes to make it come together. Now is that the same techniques that you used on the lizard here too? Actually on the lizard we actually just cheat a little bit by using a uh, brand new tack rag. Now an older tack rag will do it, but a brand new one will actually uh, give a little bit more cleaner line. There's no build up inside the pores of the, of the tack rag. But you pretty much ruin one tack rag when you do this. But the ending result comes up pretty good. Well, that's phenomenal. And one of my favorite parts of the truck is the train. The attention to detail on this train, guys, is just out of this world. Is there any special techniques or anything that you did here, or is most of this straight line and from your head right to the truck? Actually, we did a lot of research because there's so many different types of locomotives out there for this era. We did a lot of research and found the picture that we wanted, um, and then uh, pretty much copied that with uh, a lot of tape for the hard lines and things like that. That's awesome. Little Scooby-Doo action there driving the uh, far train. The attention to detail on the horse is just out of this world. For a crowd at home when you see this it's going to absolutely blow your mind. If you'll notice all the details come around between the bed and the cab as well. Um, and this was done for obviously for judging reasons when we compete on the uh, higher scale car show series across the United States that's awesome obviously the beds not attached we're getting ready to uh, get ready for clear coat Eric let's walk over to the bed and talk about this section over here as well um, let's start from where we picked off at the train and kind of work our way back now as you can see we wanted to include a trestle in this in this scene. The trestle itself took about six hours by itself, just by itself, completely. Uh, we used a lot of fine line tape, and there's probably about three different stages, three different layers of paint on that trestle. That's amazing. And the attention to detail and how everything curves from every section of the truck comes all the way around. Details in the rocks. A lot of cool hidden stuff in here guys we'll be doing some Facebook giveaways for guys that find the hidden stuff here in the upcoming future so yeah we're pretty excited about getting this thing in its final stages and, and can't wait to see it unveiled at the SEMA show you now the back of the truck the tailgate this is my second personal favorite spot of the truck it's just awesome little saloon scene little wild wild west howdy duty america's original cowboy and also you'll notice that somewhere in there is hit the the uh, tell the tell light is actually hidden in there I mean, you can see it, but it's it kind of concealed just a little bit. It's just amazing. 
amazing. The little boy holding the creamsicle. Yeah, it's kind of an inside joke for everybody around here that's been working on this truck. So. Yeah, the orange when you see it in person, guys, it's the exact same color as a creamsicle that you'd buy at the local grocery store. It's a little hidden detail there. A little sexy woman hidden into the mountains. Wouldn't be an airlift trailer without it being hammered and laying on the ground. Now you'll notice the the, the uh, dust around the horse's feet. That was actually done with cotton, using cotton and, and stretching it out, and then they're brushing straight straight through the cotton. We got the same effect with uh, uh, on the clouds by doing the same technique. Absolutely awesome. Well, guys, this is going to wrap it up for this segment of the airbrush. Um, right. We'll have a couple more videos coming with the bicycle for sure that's going to sit in the bed of the truck. You'll be at, you'll actually be able to catch me uh, airbrushing live at the SEMA show. I'll be in the Illumina uh booth airbrushing live. Uh, if you have any questions or like to talk to me in person about the truck, we'll be there. Uh, otherwise been great working on this project enjoyed every minute of it we enjoyed losing all this sleep on this thing it's worth it uh and I, otherwise and, and i'll see you guys at the uh SEMA show 2012. awesome thanks for your time today eric thanks. i'm gonna get walk over here to the dashboard and get one little quick look at this so everybody can kind of see what's going on here